Welcome back. We're at it again. A new, a new exam. Five more questions to kind of whet your appetite as we go through and do a deep dive. We're going to try and uh, and give you some challenging questions. And with those questions, we're going to go through. Uh, we're going to try to answer the answer correctly, uh, and then we're going to take a deep dive. We're going to figure out why the answer is the answer. We're going to we're going to talk about it. We're going to educate you, uh, and we're going to have some fun doing it. At least that's what I tell myself. Uh, as I'm in my office alone talking to myself, uh, let's let's jump into it before someone decides to start calling me crazy. Let's go through this, right? All right, right off the bat, question number one: A company has received, uh, I'm sorry, a company has recently implemented a new incident response plan. During a review meeting, an incident response team reports the following data: incident one through four, and then we see some hours associated with it. Based on this data, what is the MTTR? for the incidents. Ooh, what is the MTTR for these incidents? What do you think? Uh, I feel like there's a lot in here, right? A lot to unpack. Uh, if you know what MTTR is, then I feel like you know the answer to it. But if you don't know what MTTR is, um, I very much feel like you're gonna struggle, okay? And the reason I say that is, and, and I can't pound on this enough. I pound on this in Network Plus, Security Plus. I, I pound it on everything, right? You gotta know your acronyms. You gotta, just by knowing the acronym, this question almost answers itself. If you know what MTTR is, then you know that this question pretty much answers itself because it tells you exactly how to answer the question just by knowing what the acronym is. Uh, and so if you don't know the acronyms, if you're struggling with those acronyms, you gotta start learning your acronyms. Uh, I, I firmly believe, I firmly believe that 40% of CompTIA exams are just knowing what the acronyms are. If you just know what the acronyms are, 40% of the exam answers itself. For, I want to say, pen test, CYSA, Security Plus, A Plus, and Network Plus. I think when you get into CASP, it gets a little bit more difficult. But, but still need to know what those acronyms are. All right, shall we, shall we dissect this? Let's, let's dissect it. Uh, if you need more time, go ahead and pause it. Remember, we only want to spend 30 to 45 seconds per question. Uh, a company recently implemented a new security, uh, I'm sorry, a new incident response plan. During a review meeting, the incident response team reports the following data. Incident one, three hours. Incident two, two hours. Incident three, five hours. Incident four, four hours. Based on this data, what is the mean time to respond? Mean time to respond to these incidents. So we have to assume or extrapolate based on what it's giving us that those hours are actually response hours. Uh, and so we would take all of them. We'd say three plus two is five. Five plus five is 10. Uh, plus four is 14, 14 divided by four, because we have four incidents, would give us our number. Uh, and then let's see, with 14, we would probably come out with, what What would we come out with that? What is 15 divided by four? Oh my gosh, math sucks. Uh, well, we know that three, so it'd be three and a half hours. Three and a half hours would be our correct answer in this one uh, by doing that. Let me make sure my math is right. 14, let's see, 12. 12 divided by four is three. And then we've got two hours left over. That would be three and a half hours. And there we have it, three and a half hours right there. Not too bad, not too bad. Remember, you'll have a piece of paper and a pencil uh, or, a, uh, or a board with a dry erase marker on you. So you can do the math fairly quickly. No, they don't give you a calculator. I'm sorry, I get asked that question all the time. All right, question number two, a security analyst is using the MITRE attack framework to map out an attack on the organization's network. The analyst identifies the following tactics used by the attacker. Uh, initial access, phishing, execution, power cell, persistence, registry, run keys, lateral movement, remote desktop protocol, RDP, exfiltration, HTTP. Which phase of the MITRE attack framework is being described? What do you think? What do you think about this one? Uh, that's, I guess you kind of have to know uh, the MITRE attack framework. I think you can expect to see questions similar to this one uh, as you're going through it. I think you would expect to see similar questions, right? Uh, and so what phase of the MITRE attack framework is being described? What do you think? Well, I, uh, I feel like the initial phase was phishing, right? Our initial access was phishing, and we know that, right? So this is how they initially gained access into our system. Uh, well, let's, let's, let's tackle the, the actual answers. Is it reconnaissance? No, it's not reconnaissance. We know it's not reconnaissance, uh, because they've actually done something. They've already done RDP. They've already exfiltrated the data. Can't be reconnaissance. I feel like that's an easy one to get rid of, right? So the next one on our list would be impact. Why, why is it not impact? Well, impact involves directly affecting the availability, uh, the integrity, or the confidentiality of the system. 
Uh, and so if they were destroying something, if they were facing it, maybe they stopped the service, maybe they did something like that, then we would be in the impact phase. But you can see here that we're actually SFIP trading data, and so not really impacting one of those points. So can't really be impact. Uh, that leaves privilege escalation, C, or D, tactic chain. What do you think? Why is it privilege escalation or tactic chain? What is your guess? What do you think? Well, if you said privilege escalation, you would be incorrect, right? This is the tactic involves allowing the attacker to gain a higher level of permissions, uh, more access to the system, and we're not seeing that here, right? We've already done a lateral movement via RDP, uh, but we didn't escalate privileges, and we've gone ahead and exfiltrated the data. That means it can't be privilege escalation. We're actually in the tactic chain. So D, tactic chain, would actually be the correct answer. This is the sequence of steps we the attacker uses or the stages the attacker uses. And we can see here that it's outlining the different stages. It's outlining what it did from start down to finish that we've identified. Uh, and so in our minor attack framework, that would be the tactic change. That's what it's identifying. Uh, and so D, D is going to be our correct answer. And there you have it. There it is right there, D. All right, question number three. An organization has an SLO with its MSSP that states the MSSP must provide incident response within 30 minutes of detection 95% of the time. What does this SLO specify? What does the SLO specify? Uh, a lot of reading on this one, right? A lot of acronyms as well. We're going to continually see those acronyms coming to haunt us. What do you think? What do you think? Uh, I know. It's, uh, it's one of those things that you have to kind of go through. And there's some slight variances into each one of the questions. Uh, typical of CYSA, a little bit harder than what you might have seen in Security Plus. A little bit harder. What do you think? All right. Let's go ahead and answer this one. If you uh, if you need extra time, go ahead and pause the video. Let's start with D. Let's start with D. The MSSP, or the Managed Security Service Provider, must provide a report within 30 minutes of the incident uh, detection 90% of the time. No, no, that's not what we're doing here, right? Uh, we say that it must provide incident response within 30 minutes of detection 95% of the time. That is not what we're saying. That's not what we're saying. So D, not going to be correct. Uh, by the way, SLO, service level objective, service level objective for those that forgot. All right, that leaves A, B, or C. Uh, C, the MSSP must resolve incidents within 30 minutes, 95% of the time. Now, this is very close. Uh, so must resolve incidents within 30 minutes, 95% of the time. But if we look closely, it says the MSSP must uh, provide incident response, not resolve, within 30 minutes of detection. And so again, C can't be the right answer. That's going to leave A or B, A or B. Uh, A, the MSSP must guarantee no more than 30 minutes of downtime per month. That is not what it's saying. Uh, and so B, the managed security service provider must respond to incidents within 30 minutes, 95% of the time. You'd be surprised. I know some of you are probably like, wow, that was really easy. And some of you may be gone, okay, wait a second. Uh, did I read that all the way correct? This is one of those questions, uh, very low points, very low points, but easy to get wrong because you rush. Uh, and this is where I tell students all the time, don't rush through these questions. You got to read the question, read the answers, and then read, read the question. You'd be surprised how many people will get this one wrong, um, believe it or not, just from speed reading, just from speed reading. All right, very easy question. Question number four. You are conducting a vulnerability scan on your organization's network using vulnerability scanner with various plugins. The following output is generated. The following output is generated. Uh, plugin, we see the ID, we see the severity is high. In the description, the remote host is running version of OpenSSL that is vulnerable to multiple attacks. What action should be taken based on this plugin output? What action should be taken? I know this time it doesn't give us the uh, proper response. We have to figure that out on our own. Uh, so we have to use a little bit of critical thinking on this one. What do you think? What do you think? All right. Uh, let's jump right into the answer. Well, I'll give you. I'll give you a couple seconds. I'll give you a couple seconds. I know. I'm speed. I'm speeding through it. Let's give you a couple seconds. All right. Let's let's go ahead and answer this one. If you need more time, as always, you can pause the video. Uh, what action should be taken based on this plugin output? Well, if you said uninstall OpenSSL from the remote host, you would be 100% incorrect. Incorrect. We are not uninstalling OpenSSL. Uh, that would not be the proper thing to do. OpenSSL 
uh, would probably, if we did, if we uninstalled it, right, if we installed it, that would probably cause some havoc with our internal systems. Remember that cybersecurity is not about taking away availability, it's about securing the systems, not about removing availability of systems. I could hear the fights with IT right now if we just uninstalled OpenSSL from a remote host uh, without without talking to them first, of course, without doing change management. Oh man, that would be bad. Uh, all right, so I think we can get rid of D. I feel like we can get rid of A on that same premise. We won't disable the OpenSSL service immediately either. Uh, not something we would normally do, right? Unless it was something that we had no other choice. But again, we disabled service, it could cause some major havoc within our enterprise environment. So definitely not something we're going to do uh, unless we have no other choice. That's the only time we would disable it. So we have no other choice. There's no good options. Um, and again, we would do change management. We'd have to get permission, all those other good things. Uh, that leaves B or C. We can ignore the warning as a false positive, or we can upgrade to the latest version of OpenSSL. I feel like ignoring it is a valuable answer uh, that a lot of people would, would do in their real jobs, but that is not the correct answer. That's not something we're going to do. We're not going to ignore it as a false positive, especially since we don't see anything dictating that it's a false positive. There's nothing on our question or on our output that indicates that it is a false positive. Therefore, we're going to upgrade to the latest version of OpenSSL. That should fix the issue uh, about all the time, right? <clears throat> we want to do that. All right, let's move on. That's going to be C. C is going to be our correct answer. All right, question number five, last question for the night. An employee reports receiving a suspicious email with the following characteristics. We can see billing from testingcompany.com. Subject is invoice attached with an attachment of PDF. <coughs> and it says, please find the attached invoice for your recent purchase. Upon further analysis, the security team discovers that the attachment contains malware. What type of email-based attack is this? I feel like that is 100%. I feel like I've gotten some of these, actually, uh, on my personal email, believe it or not. I feel like I've gotten those. Uh, different than what we're seeing here. Different than what we're seeing here. So what type of attack is this? What type of email attack is this? What do you think? And there's some hints in this thing. There are some hints in our in our wording uh, that we need to be aware of. So which one do you think it is? What do you think? All right. So an employee receiving a suspicious email from the following characteristics. If you need more time, go ahead and pause the video. Uh, let's answer this one, though. Uh, we see from billing, trustedcompany.com. We see an invoice attached. We see the attachment, and then we see the body. Uh, what did we identify? I feel like we can identify as not being a business email compromise. I feel like a BEC is incorrect. Not something that this is part of, right? So we can get rid of that one. I feel like that leaves phishing, whaling, or spear phishing. There's nothing in this email that indicates whaling. There's no C-suite, it's an employee, it's not a CISO, it's not a CFO, it's nobody like that. It even says an employee. Uh, and so I feel like whaling is the easy one to get rid of. That leaves phishing or spear phishing. However, there's one thing in here that dictates that it is, in fact, spear phishing and not regular phishing. Why would I identify this as spear phishing as opposed to phishing? What makes it, what makes it spear phishing rather than regular phishing? Well, we see here the security team. Okay, so an employee, E, is our first hint that it's spear phishing and not phishing. Because remember, phishing is multiple employees. Uh, I'm trying to cast a net out there. I'm trying to get how many I can get. But we're seeing an employee, not multiple employees, just one. And so that's our first indication that it's spear phishing. Our second indication is that it's billing at trustedcompany.com. It's from a specific source, right? And so that would be our second clue. But mostly it's going to be that employee. It's going to be that singular thing. Yes, it is that, that small of a detail uh, when you're looking at this, why it is spear phishing and not regular phishing. Uh, and so spear phishing, C, is going to be our correct answer. And there we go.